Praise the Lord. Well, I want to talk to you tonight about five Ps. <laughs> Sounds funny, doesn't it? Five Ps. Five Ps that actually are very important in our life. Something that can really change your life. Because as I've been growing in the Lord over the years, certain parts of this message have really been a big part of my life. And it's been over a period of time. It hasn't, you know, things with God don't come instantly to you. There is a time period from hearing, believing, and receiving usually. Sometimes you receive instantly. Other times it takes a period of time. As you grow and as you mature, you, be, you begin to receive what God is saying to you. Amen. Like the prophetic word. The prophetic word can come forth, but it doesn't mean that it's for today and tomorrow. Sometimes it's for a time to come. And it's usually to prepare you for what God has already got for you. Amen. And so I believe this word is going to really help you tonight. Amen. And the first one I want to talk to you about, well, I mean, I spoke this morning about God's way is perfect. Amen. God's ways are higher than our ways. Say that. Say, God, your way is higher than my way. And God's ways, amen, they're higher than our ways and God's thoughts are higher than our ways. Say, God, your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. I'm going to come up to your way of thinking and your way of doing things because God knows best. Amen. God doesn't tell you to do things a certain way because he's, he's not being fair. Amen. God wants you to do things a certain way because he wants you to get a certain result. And the result is blessing. The result, result is a good plan for your life. Say amen. So the more that we yield to doing things God's way and thinking God's thoughts, the more that we are going to walk in the blessing that God has provided already for us. Amen. Now, you know, stubbornness doesn't get you very far, right? Especially stubbornness in the wrong direction. But you can use stubbornness in the right direction. In other words, I will be stubborn about the things of God. You're not going to persuade me and tell me anything else. I am stubborn about healing because I know God heals me. So I will be stubborn. You can't change my mind. Amen. And I believe that is stubbornness in the right direction. But if it's in the wrong direction, it can work against you. So the more that we learn and grow in God, the more we begin to understand the purposes of God, the plans of God, and what God is doing in our lives and what he wants to do. And in Isaiah, it says his ways higher, his, his thoughts are higher, so we must come up higher. And we must decide here tonight, amen, that God loves you. Say, God loves me? That will never change. He loves me in spite of me. Amen. Can somebody open one of these for me, please? Thank you. Hallelujah. So I want to talk to you firstly tonight about purpose. See, every one of us, purpose, every one of us is on a journey. Some of our journeys have been quite crazy. Anybody had a bit of a crazy journey here tonight? Some of our journeys have, have been quite crazy. You've gone through the Narmut Desert. You've crossed a few oceans, amen. Some of you have swum under the ocean. <laughs> but some of our journeys have been quite crazy. But God has always been with you in the journey. Amen. His hand is on you. Amen. Sometimes you don't feel like God's hand's on you, but if he says his hand is on you, I'm telling you his hand is on you. Amen. Because he loves you. And life is a journey, and sometimes our lives take a certain turn because we make a bad decision, and so we go, go off on a side journey that uh, can last a couple of years, you know. I mean, the Bible says in a little while. How long is in a little while? I don't know. I wish I did, I, because I could give you the answer tonight. I could say, in a little while, it's three months. And you would say, oh, yes, okay, so only three months. Sometimes in a little while can be a day, a few days, a few months, a few years. <laughs> but I promise you, in a little while, you will get the answer. You will get the answer. It might not be on your time, but it will always be on God's time. And when you get the answer, it will be the right time for you to get the answer. <laughs> say Amen. And I'm so glad that not all my prayers get answered because I have asked for things sometime that have been more damaging to me if I got them. And I only found out later that had I have got that, I would have been in a terrible mess. So I'm glad God doesn't always answer all my prayers the way I expect him to. Amen. He's going to answer 
your prayers according to the word of God. Amen. Amen. And his plan for your life. And so we are all on a journey. And as I shared this morning, sometimes there is a detour along the way. But a bump in the road is not the road. A bump in the road is not the road. It's just a bump along the way. There's still a lot of road to travel. Amen. So in life, when things happen, when you make a mistake, when you go through a difficult time or a dry, a, a dry period in your life or a hard period in your life, don't focus on that hard period. Focus on the journey. Amen. Focus on the fact that God, while you're breathing, God still has a plan for your life and it's going to end good. You're going to have a good outcome. Amen. And you're going to be everything God is calling you to be. And so I'm very grateful for that. There is a purpose for every one of us. Every one of us in this room, God is going to use. We are not all the same. We are all different. And you just spend two days with me and you'll see that we are not the same. Amen. Hallelujah. What he put inside of you, he hasn't necessarily put inside of me. And I cannot be you and you cannot be me. Aren't you grateful for that? <laughs> but the wonderful thing about it is God has put something inside of every one of us and it's a miracle. What he's put in you is a miracle and we need to receive of what he has put inside of you. That is why when you don't fulfill what God is wanting to do in your life and through your life, we are at a disadvantage. But when you start to flow in what God has put inside of you, all of us are blessed and we benefit by it. Say amen. And sometimes you can begin with certain things flowing in your life and only when you get to my beautiful age, amen, I think I'm at the perfect age right now. Hallelujah. I'm 25 and <laughs> this is such a wonderful age because I'm now comfortable in my skin. I don't care what you think about me. When I was 30, I cared more about what people thought about me than anything else. If they didn't like me, it would affect me. Oh, I'd be so upset. But now I've reached the age of 40, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm not worried what you think about me. All I care about is what God thinks about me, amen. And I'm not afraid to say what I need to say. You see, when you reach the ripe old age of 60, hallelujah, say amen. You don't care what people think. You just want to bless them and be a, a blessing to them and encourage them. And I, it, it is, you know, really, I'm just comfortable in my skin. Are you okay with that? Yeah. The things that used to bother me don't bother me no more. Yeah. Amen. And so I'm happy to be who I am. And that's the wonderful thing about God's purpose for your life. The more that you walk in it, the more that you get comfortable in the gifting and the flow that God has given you. But you have to start somewhere. Amen. You're never going to get there unless you start somewhere. And I always say to people, put your hand to the plow. The moment you put your hand to the plow, you'll begin to do something and you'll either find out you're called to it or you won't. If everybody says, my brother, I don't think you should do that, then you know that you're not called for that purpose. Say amen. But everyone says, oh my gosh, you do that so well. You're amazing. You know, oh, hallelujah. I think this is what God's calling me to. Amen. And usually it's something that you perhaps have done along the way in your life. I was sharing with Pastor Kevin and Veronica this morning how I grew up dancing on the stage. I did dancing for 17 years. I did tap dancing, modern jazz dancing, and I did ballet. So I was so used to the stage that when God called me to preach, okay, hallelujah, I was happy on the stage, but tonight I will not get on that stage, hallelujah. <laughs> Otherwise, I will be on the floor with the worship leaders and I'll be of no effect to you. Amen. But everything in your life, God will use it somewhere along the way. You'll be amazed how your journey will knit together and you'll see the hand of God flow through your life. How many of you can see that right now? Amen. And so when it comes to your purpose and your gifting and your calling, put your hand to the plow and just begin, begin somewhere. And every one of us, when we start out, none of us are confident. We're all it's stepping out of the boat, boat by faith. Amen. Trusting the Lord. It's always an intimidating thing to step out of the boat. 
So you've got to keep your eyes on Jesus and not on yourself. If you put your eyes on you, you will never step out of the boat. If you put your eyes on Jesus and he says come and you step out of the boat, it will be an awesome journey. Hallelujah. One that will take you where you never dreamt you could ever go. Here I am traveling around the world to different countries preaching the gospel. Did I ever think I could do that alone? No. No, I didn't. Hallelujah. And I'm in unusual places. But God is with me and God is working it. And I don't have to force anything. You know, you never have to force anything when God is in it. It just begins to flow. Because it's the sap that comes from the vine that brings forth the fruit in your life. And it's not hard to produce fruit when you are vitally united to the vine. It just comes naturally and it just begins to grow. Amen. So purpose, what is your purpose tonight? What is God calling you to do? What is the goal of your life? What is the aim of your life? What is the reason for your life? Amen. Now, there can be many purposes in your life. Along in my journey of my life, I have accomplished many things, many, 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 many purposes. But at the end of my life, there'll be one main purpose in what the reason I lived my life. And I believe it will be, here lies Lindy McCauley, who loved the Lord and loved winning souls and love preaching the gospel. I hope it doesn't say, here lies Lindy McCauley who loved shopping at Marshall's. <laughs> if it says that, there's a problem, amen. So you think about what is your life gonna say, if they had to sum up your life into one sentence, what would they say about you? What would they say? And I believe that is a really wonderful reason for you to press in to the things that God has for your life, amen. Because I don't know about you, I want my life to speak of God's goodness. I want my life to speak of his mercy, his love, and his goodness. And so along the way, lots of things happen. Paul said, for my determined purpose is that I might know him. And I believe that is, should be all of our purposes. Amen. Paul said, my determined purpose, the thing I want to do more than anything is I want to know him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because in knowing him, you will receive everything that, you got, that God has planned for you. And Paul said, this is not a one-time thing. You don't come to know him just once. Paul said, it is a progressive intimacy. And the more you are intimate with him on a progressive basis every day, the more you're intimate with him, the more you're going to come to know him. If you spend one hour with me, you could say, I know Lindy McCauley, but you don't really know Lindy McCauley. But if you moved into my house, amen, you would begin to really know Lindy McCauley, amen. And God wants us to dwell in the secret place with him because he wants us to know him. So our purpose here tonight should be the more that we know him, the more that we will fulfill the purpose in our lives. Paul said, for my determined purpose is that I might know him. This is Philippians 3 verse 10. That I might progressively become, progressively it's ongoing, more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. Not acquainted with everything he does, but acquainted with him, the person, Jesus. Amen. Acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person. People, Jesus is wonderful. And the more we come to know them, him, the more wonderful we're going we're gonna to see that he is. The more that I've known him, I've been, I got, gave my life to Jesus when I was 19 years old. I'm still discovering how wonderful he is. Sometimes I cannot stop saying, I love you, you're so wonderful, you're so magnificent, oh Lord, you're amazing. Because that's who he is. And the more that I know him, the more that I want to say that about him. Because you will never exhaust who he is. He is who he is, amen. And we progressively come to know him. And understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly, and that I might in the same way come to know the purpose outflowing from his resurrection. A lot of people, you'd think Jesus was dead the way they are. You never hear anything positive coming out of their mouths. Amen. And God, the word of God says that there is power in knowing him. There's power in knowing that he is resurrected from the dead. We don't serve a dead God. He is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there is power in knowing him. There is power in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
and that I may in the same way share his sufferings as to be continually transformed in the spirit into, the like, into his likeness, even to the death in the hope. And I want to tell you something. The one thing we are called to suffer as Christians is persecution for the word's sake. And that's what Jesus suffered. He suffered persecution. Amen. For what he believed and what he preached. And we will suffer the same persecution. But I'll tell you that in the persecution, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're not, now, if you suffer persecution for stupid sake, then, hello, then stupid is stupid, amen. <laughs> but if we suffer persecution because of the word's sake, then God is with us, amen. amen. Hallelujah, we are not alone, and the word of God is going to bring us through. So what is the purpose of your life today? And, and it's so important, we see here where um, in 1 John 3 verse 8 it says, the perp Jesus said, he who, who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. But for this purpose was the Son of God manifest. In other words, Jesus was revealed for this purpose that he might destroy the works of the devil. That was Jesus' main purpose, was to destroy the works of the devil. And in destroying the works of the devil, he redeemed us back to God. Hallelujah. So what is your purpose tonight? And for every one of us, there is a purpose. There is a season. Amen. There is a purpose. Esther chapter 4 from verse 13 and 14, it says, But who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I'm so glad this is our time. You're not living 300 years ago. I thank God for that. I'm glad I don't live in the day when they wore those big dresses and those wigs because they all had lice on their heads. <laughs> they only bathed once a week. Hallelujah. That's scary. Bath once a week. Oh, my word. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so glad I can open the tap and have hot water and flush the toilet. Amen. Aren't you glad that you are born at this time and in this season? Amen. Hallelujah. And Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 says, For everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. You are here for such a time as this. God has his hand on your life. Say amen. Hallelujah. And all you need to do is let God unfold in your life his plan and purpose. Be patient for your greater purpose. Even while you're on the way, on the journey of life, you're in Bible school right now, amen, and you're all going to graduate, aren't you? You're going to finish the course. Are you going to finish the course? We're not going to start something we don't finish. We're going to start finishing some things. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So how do you stay in your purpose? And I'm going to give you a few points. How do you stay in your purpose when everything around us is going crazy, when this world is unsettled, it's up and down and up and down, when there's wars and rumors of wars all the way around us? How do we stay in our purpose and not be distracted? Number one, stay in the Word. The Word of God is always going to stabilize you. Amen. It is your anchor. Say, it is my anchor. We know that Hebrews 4 verse 12 says well, the word of, that God speaks is alive and full of power. Amen. So when the word, world is upside down and rocking, you are stable because the word of God has enough power to stabilize you. Say amen. amen. So stay in the word. Stay in the morning when you wake up. Make sure you spend time before you get your phone and read your Facebook or whatever you're doing. Read God's face, hallelujah. Get into the mirror of the word of God. Make sure your spirit gets fed before your brain gets fed, amen. Stay in the word. We have no excuse. We can have a Bible on our phone, a Bible on our laptop, a Bible on our iPad, you version. They even prepare daily studies for you. You can read a, a, a study every single day, and I do. Every day I read. Um, I haven't read for the last two days because I've really been running around, but I read every day, every day. And I've started reading my Bible from Genesis to Revelations. How fantastic. I've never done that. 38 years of full-time ministry. I've never read my Bible from beginning to the end in one go. I want to try and do that every year and start on my birthday. So I've got a bit of reading to do to catch up. 
Amen. But when you start reading your Bible in chronological, you're going to see how amazing God is and how hard he has tried to love his people and we are stubborn in the wrong direction. Hmm. So stay in the word. Let that word keep you. Let that word be your anchor and your foundation. And then your foundations will be strong and you'll build your house upon a rock and not upon, upon sinking sand. Say amen. So when the storms arise, when the storms come, your house stands, hallelujah, because it is built upon a rock, amen, a good solid foundation. Number two, stay in his presence, stay in his presence. Remember, he is a vine and you are a branch. When you get cut off from his presence, you can do nothing, amen, amen. But when you are in his presence, we are, when you are in, in the vine, Everything you need will flow through you to provide what you need. Amen. Stay in his presence. You, all you have to do is begin to praise him and you're right in his presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Number three, stay filled with the Holy Ghost. These are such baby things. They keep you anchored in difficult times. They keep you anchored when there is a bump in the road. They keep you anchored when the devil comes upon your life suddenly. You know, suddenly, and you're not expecting it, suddenly something happens. Your boat should never rock. No matter what happens, no matter how hard it, how hard it is, you know better. Because the Word of God says you will be fine. Your house will be safe and secure because God is in it. Amen. With you. Hallelujah. Amen. So stay filled with the Holy Ghost. And we read that in Acts 1.8. It says, but you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might. I don't know about you, but I need every bit of ability that I can get. Because tomorrow when I wake up, I need strength beyond my strength, and I know I do. I need joy beyond my natural joy tomorrow when I wake up and have to run and catch an airplane. Amen. So it comes from Him. It all comes from Him. Praise God. So tomorrow you will receive power. You, not tomorrow. You receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then every day you draw it from Him, not from your own strength. Ephesians chapter 6 says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. If you're trying to be strong in your own strength, you're not going to survive because your strength always fails you. But his strength will never ever fail you. Say amen, somebody. So be strong in the Lord, not in your strength. You've got to look to him. Amen. Stay filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will keep you. He'll keep you. He'll keep you in a good place. The more you pray in tongues, the more you are aware of God's presence, the more you are strengthened in the inner man. Because the Bible talks about the inner man. It's the man that is in your inner being. I believe it's somewhere in your belly because it says from out of your belly shall flow rivers. Amen. The inner man, not the outer man. Listen, when the inner man is, is beautiful, the outer man gets beautiful. Say amen. If you want to be beautiful, let that inner man grow and be beautiful and you will be beautiful. But you shall receive dunamis, power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That is strength, ability, and might. And number four, under purpose, stay in faith. Never let go of your faith. Amen. The devil will do everything to rob you of your faith because your faith gets you what God has promised. Everything God has promised comes by faith. Amen. Faith works by love. Say, faith works by love. But faith doesn't work from frustration and irritation and anxiety and worry. Faith works from a place of rest. Amen. We have to enter into rest, people. I have never seen so many beaten, exhausted, irritable, frustrated Christians as I see these days. We are supposed to be the ones who have the most peace and the most rest. But it's only when you're doing it in your own strength, you will feel the load and it will be exhausting. The load will exhaust you if you are carrying it. Because he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is. If it's a heavy burden, then you've got to ask yourself, who is carrying this? And then make up your mind, you are not going to carry it. I am not going to carry it, Lord. I'm your child. You said be anxious for nothing. That's exactly what I'm going to be. Anxious for nothing. I'm going to pray. I'm going to believe you. And I'm going to enter into rest. 
Because when I enter into rest, I am saying, God, you can do it, I can't. And that means I'm humble, I have no pride. When you have pride, you say, God, I don't know if you can do this for me, so I have to help you just a little bit. And so you carry the load. Well, all the best. I'd like you to see how long you can carry it for. Amen. Because it will exhaust you. So if you're exhausted, something is wrong. If you are frustrated, something is wrong. Your eyes are not on him. If you are frustrated, if you are irritable, something is wrong. Amen. Because this Isaiah 40, verse 40 says, For those that wait upon the Lord shall be exhausted. <laughs> Sorry? Did you read the same verse as me? <laughs> For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their... You see, waiting is a good thing. Because in waiting, you are strengthened. Yeah. 